Why are some medications so expensive? And why do they keep pushing new drugs when they are only slightly better than the older, cheaper ones? To maximize continuous profit, they must find ongoing issues. Most importantly, a problem that can never be ended, at least in our lifetime. Now, welcome back this week. Let's have a little talk today. A little different talk today. Now, have you noticed that many business models, especially those in the surface, are fundamentally based on the existence of problems? Basically, for these businesses to thrive or even exist, they need to benefit from or exploit a problem common to most, if not all people, such as people's weight. Now, last week. In the video, one of you commented that it looked like、uh, I have lost 50 pounds compared to my videos from two or three years ago. Well,、uh, not that much.、Uh, I think it's maybe about 40 pounds、uh, so far. Now, I'm not here to talk about my personal weight journey, but the topic of weight loss or weight gain is common to many people. A problem that is perpetual and is very exploitable. By the pharmaceutical industry, the perfect example is how the industry maximizes profit with drugs like Ozempic and other GLP-1 analogs. The GLP-1 analogs are a class of drugs initially developed to treat type 2 diabetes by mimicking a natural hormone that helps regulate blood sugar levels. I've talked about in past videos. You can check that out after this one. I'll also have the link there. However, besides lowering blood sugar, even the earliest version of GLP-1 analogs led to some moderate weight loss in diabetes patients, which was an added benefit for them. But the industry saw more. They saw a gold mine to an ongoing problem. Now, more recently, these drugs have been recognized for their effectiveness in promoting weight loss. Now, some pro GLP-1 practitioners would say, "Hey, hey, weight loss is good. We finally found a class of drugs that works on weight and is evidence-based." Well, the amount of evidence is indeed growing. The industry continuously runs clinical trials to find additional benefits of GLP-1 analogs. Most recently, the medical community cheered on reducing non-fatal heart attack rates and cardiovascular death in type 2 diabetes patients using GLP-1 analogs. But at the same time, these GLP-1 drugs also increase heart rates and could worsen the heart of people with left ventricular problems. Now the question is: Is the cardiovascular benefit from weight loss? A shocking finding. At the end of the day, if someone is at an unhealthy weight, losing weight is likely to be beneficial. These types of industry-sponsored studies are often crafted in a way to provide the so-called evidence to support the current evidence-based practice of medicine. When in this case, it was almost an expected outcome. Unfortunately, by providing more evidence of benefits, the industry will have more arguments to expand the GLP-1 analogs into the weight loss market, and it is proven to be a very lucrative business. Novo Nordisk is the maker of Wegovy, which contains a higher amount of semaglutide than Ozempic, specifically indicated for weight loss. Novo Nordisk stock has increased over 50% in the past year since the heat of using GLP-1 analogs for weight loss. Now, this is because of the pricing strategies of these GLP-1 drugs. Eli Lilly has also launched a direct-to-consumer pathway for people to get GLP-1 analogs outside of traditional clinics. What they do in this program is that Eli Lilly has collaborative prescribers to prescribe GLP-1 analogs to patients on the phone, and the company directly ships the drug to patients. Do you think there is a conflict of interest here? Now back to the main problem is how the medical community has shifted the view of weight management and obesity. Historically. 
Obesity was often viewed as a result of personal choice and lack of self-discipline. Over time, there has been a shift towards treating it as a medical condition. This shift was solidified when organizations like the American Medical Association officially recognized obesity as a disease in 2013. Now, here is a disease that makes people suffer, and let's find a solution, specifically a pharmaceutical solution. Now, while GLP-1 uh, studies are always designed alongside diet and exercise routines, the emphasis on these drugs. Often draw attention away from non-medical interventions like nutrition and physical activity. When was the last time you heard a talk about obesity prevention, such as improving food quality, regulating junk food advertising, and enhancing infrastructure and support for better physical activities? Now, don't get me wrong here. I agree, obesity is a medical condition. In fact, it's not only a medical condition, but an epidemic. And just like other epidemics or even pandemics, the medical community has been driven to find a quick fix, and GLP-1 analogs are the immediate answer. But have we considered the risk of patients becoming lifelong users of these drugs? Benefiting pharmaceutical sales more than patient health in the long term. Well, unfortunately, the good old diet and exercise are never a quick fix. Most people also don't like to suffer from not being able to eat their favorite junk food. Instead, they are much inclined to take an injection, sit down, watch TV, and lose weight. The pharmaceutical innovation is important, but it needs to balance profit motives with genuine health outcomes. The case of GLP-1 analogs shows us both sides of this coin. On the one side, on one hand, they offer many people immediate benefits. However, they also exposed the industry's tendency to focus on profitable solutions. Rather than inclusive, holistic health improvements, sadly, the medical community is also deeply involved in collaboration with the pharmaceutical industry. While、well, there is a saying, the person who pays the bill can talk louder, and the message of profiting from suffering is certainly loud and clear, coming from the big farmer. As we leave the pandemic behind, some of the most pressing health issues are likely to be obesity, substance misuse, and overmedication. I will be spending more time researching and talking about these issues and offering some of my personal thoughts on these controversial topics. Along with that, I will also cover health tips and news and sugar control topics in short form videos. Now, my goal here is to. Let us learn to live a life with as little medication as possible. That is all for this week, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Take good care. Bye.